leave this material world and go to the spiritual world where everything is eternal, blissful, full of knowledge. Huh? Ultimate happiness does not exist in this material world. The only happiness there is in this material world is called flickering. Sukhalam dukhalam. It means flickering happiness mixed with uh, pain. Yeah, sukha dukha. Then this material world is called sukhalam dukhalam. A place of mixed suffering and enjoyment. So you may get a little enjoyment, yes. But then when it's over, oh, here comes the pain. Look out. And that's karma. Karma means there's always a payback. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if we experience so-called pleasure in this material world, then as a result of that activity, we have to experience pain. That's just the way it is. So if we observe our life, we'll see that all the so-called enjoyment that we've had hasn't made us happy, hasn't made us satisfied, and not only that, it's flickering, which means as soon as we just get into it, then it's over. <laughs> it's finished. And then we have to wait until our karma comes around again to a time of enjoyment. But when we're enjoying, we think, ah, yes, uh, this is really life. This is the way it should always be. Uh, and then it's over, finished, sorry, cut. <laughs> Next scene. <laughs> so you have to go through life like this, constantly being kicked by the laws of material nature. It's not very nice. It's not really our, uh, it's not our real life. Huh? Our real life is in the spiritual world where enjoyment goes on eternally. The spiritual world is like one big festival, you know, like the chanting we were doing, getting really high on it. Uh, that goes on eternally in the spiritual world. It just gets better and better. Uh, there's never any end because everything in the spiritual world is eternal. Like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 2.16, that which really exists is eternal. And that which is temporary, it doesn't really exist. It's more or less of an illusion. We don't say that the material world is false. The material world is real. You know, just try banging your head against a wall a few times and you'll find out it's definitely real. But its reality is relative. In other words, it's based on the existence of the spiritual world. It doesn't exist independently. And nothing in this world exists eternally. Everything in the material world has a beginning and an end. So we should not put our faith in things that have a beginning and an end. That includes mundane religion. Huh? or material so-called spiritual processes like Hatha Yoga. I mean, they can give you nice bodily uh, features and stuff like that, or make you strong and it's good for health and, and all that thing, but it can't give you spiritual enlightenment. Uh, how is it possible? How can you get spir something spiritual out of something material? It's not possible. It's like trying to get milk out of an orange. No, you're going to get orange juice out of an orange. So. When we uh, work in this material world with our material senses, unless the work that we do is in relation with Krishna, then its result is going to be temporary and material. But when we work with the same body, mind, and senses in relationship with Krishna, this is called karma yoga. Karma yoga doesn't mean like being a nice guy and giving charity, you know, uh, giving $5 to the Easter Seals uh, charity or something like that. Uh, it doesn't mean feeding children in poor countries and stuff like that. That's not karma yoga. That's material charity. And material charity, just like anything material, is controlled by the modes of material nature. So its result is also material. But when we offer food to Krishna, that's spiritual. Uh, or when we dedicate our time, energy, resources, and so on to Krishna's service, meaning spreading this esoteric teaching and practicing it too, then our work becomes spiritual because it's in relationship with Krishna. It's in relationship with God. Okay, So just having a little religious service and then distributing food, uh, just doing a little chanting and then 
maybe a little talk like this about the philosophy and then having a nice meal or something like that. That's spiritual. That's karma yoga. Okay? One should uh, use one's resources, time, and energy to support the mission of Krishna, to accomplish the purposes of Krishna, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. And what is his purpose? Manmana bhava madbhakto madhyaji magnamaskuru. He says, always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer your homage unto me. Huh? Because you're always giving your attention to me, then surely you will come to me, he says. So he also says uh, that what you think of at the time of death determines your destination in the next life. So what do we think of at the time of death? Well, has anybody ever read about near-death experiences? Well, what happens? The person sees their whole life flash before their eyes in a few seconds. So what are we going to think of at the time of death? We're going to think of everything that we did in our whole life. Every impression, every act, every experience that we had in our whole life is going to pass before our mind's eye at the time of death. So if our life is full of mundane activities and material impressions and just a plain old physical work, then at the time of death, that's what we're going to think of. But if our life is full of chanting and studying the scriptures and doing service for the cause of Krishna in this world, then that's what we're going to think of at the time of death and we're going to go to the spiritual world. So that's our process. The process is very simple, actually. It's simple for one who is sincere. Uh, if someone's not sincere, then, oh my goodness, it gets very complicated. <laughs> But uh, for someone who's sincere, it's very simple because it's based on love. What is love, really, huh? Love means service. If I say, oh, I love you, mm -hmm. <laughs> what value is that? It's just a sentiment. And tomorrow I could decide, oh, no, actually, I love somebody else. So what's the value of that? But if someone gives service, then we know their love is sincere. Huh? So we, we meet many people who say, oh, yes, yes, I love Krishna, yes, yes, very nice. Uh, but then are they giving service? No. Uh, are they sending donations to help us establish our preaching activities? No. Are they traveling, you know, all across the world like uh, Florian did, to come all the way to Mexico just to work with us? No. Uh, what are they doing? Oh, they're going out with their girlfriend and they're going to the store and they're watching television and, you know, and then maybe once a week or so they check in on the website just to see, you know, what Babaji's up to. <laughs> well, this is a spectator sport. This will not help you. Huh? You have to be active. You have to engage your initiative. You have to engage your intelligence. Think about this teaching. Try to understand it. Huh? That's what it means to change your ontology from material to spiritual. How many times have we talked about that? Huh? Thousands. <laughs> but what does it really mean? It means that we don't seek happiness in this material world. Instead, we seek our happiness in the spiritual world where real happiness is actually available. That way, we don't get frustrated by trying to do something that's impossible. Huh? Material happiness is impossible. It's very fleeting. Here today, gone tomorrow. Huh? A fool and his money are soon parted. <laughs> These are all material sayings. Huh? But they're true. They have a grain of truth in them because they illustrate the temporary nature of material happiness. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> How many times have we heard that? So if someone takes this teaching very casually, uh, like uh, entertainment or something like that. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to go to the website, watch a couple of videos, and then, you know, go out with my friends and whatever. That's not going to help you. Uh, what will help you is if you take these instructions very seriously, start this chanting process, and absorb as many um, impressions of transcendental quality as possible. That will really help you. That will change your consciousness. 
you should engage in the service of the Lord engage in the service of the spiritual master and actually push on this process or this uh, mission that we have to bring this truth to as many people as possible I know it's not easy How, why do you think we've been struggling for so many years to establish this mission uh, because it's not easy you have to be approved by Krishna that means you have to be really really sincere you have to really get it uh, accept this teaching and implement it in your life by your own initiative not because I tell you to or it says so in some old dusty book no because when you pro actually do this process of devotional service you can feel the spiritual happiness huh? that's why we can do this for so many years keep chanting the same old mantra huh? <laughs> it never gets old actually in material life you know if you read the newspaper today and then you pick up the same newspaper